Megalodon was the largest shark to ever live, but could it still be alive today? Up first, the vastness of the ocean. The ocean is incredibly vast, and it's been estimated by some that we've only observed and explored some 5% of it. That raises the question then, what else could be out there? There are still hundreds or thousands of marine animals that we have not discovered or identified, but most of these are small creatures. Why is it then that scientists and researchers say the Megalodon isn't still alive with such certainty? Well, it comes down to the fact that while we haven't physically observed much of the ocean, much of the ocean is empty space, very few of the species actually inhabit the open pelagic waters of the ocean. Almost all marine animals congregate around areas of importance, usually geography, underwater islands that intercept cold water currents, shallow reefs, and other underwater geography dictates where animals spend their time. However, given recent discoveries around the potential length and dimensions of Megalodon, which make it far more similar to the oceanic white tip than the Great White, it is possible that these wide open areas are in fact where Megalodon spent its time. It has long been thought Megalodon was a coastal ambush predator hunting the massive whales of the Pliocene, but this new information may indicate they had a body form better suited for open pelagic cruising, which may have allowed them to stay under our radar. Up next, hidden in the deep. Something that has really gripped the mind of the public, especially since the discovery of another living fossil, the coelacanth in 1938, is the idea of Megalodon living in the deep sea. Coelacanths are one of the few creatures that we actually had fossil evidence of before we even discovered it living today. It was believed this ancient fish had gone extinct, but we were wrong. Could we be wrong about something else too? But coelacanths have always been deep water cave dwelling fish. They are incredibly isolated and not nearly as impacted by surface water conditions conditions and climate change, which can fluctuate widely and rapidly. Megalodon, on the other hand, dwelled in the upper levels of the ocean, hunting prey at or near the surface. That position is much more vulnerable to climate change. However, there may be a possibility that Megalodon adapted to life in the deeper sea, though it would take significant adaptation to be able to withstand the pressure and the cold. The cold has been a possible culprit in our current theory of its extinction. Next, changing food groups. Megalodon's primary prey were the large and medium whales and marine mammals of the Pliocene. However, we know that massive changes in climate led to several severe challenges. The changing of vital currents, the accumulation of ice at the poles, the cooling of the oceans, and the draining of the Tetha Sea all caused serious challenges, including restricting warm, shallow water nursing grounds. But by far, one of the greatest challenges was the change in food availability. At the same time, we see the medium and smaller sized baleen whales go extinct, and these were likely Megalodon's primary prey. With only small dolphins or very large whales to prey on, growing Megalodon likely couldn't get enough food to reach maturity. But if an adaptation were to have been evolved that allowed these species to dive deeper, they may have found a new food source in the millions and millions of large squid that inhabit the deep. Changing a food source as drastically as this is both incredibly rare and very risky, and would have taken immense environmental pressure. Still, if the adaptation were to evolve, Megalodon could have fled deeper after more abundant food. Next is heat adaptations. Megalodon was likely a mesotherm, using its metabolism to produce heat, but unable to directly control and regulate its body temperature. If Megalodon were to survive the cooling period at the end of the Pliocene, it would have had to adapt. But sharks don't have the luxury of blubber, and have to evolve different ways of staying warm or they go extinct. Modern mackerel sharks, including the Great White, are also mesotherms. However, their smaller size allows them to warm themselves on generally less food. So perhaps the king of the ocean would have had a strong pressure to decrease in size so that they could maintain their body temperatures despite the decrease in prey availability. Some arctic sharks have actual control over their blood flow and restrict it to the inner areas when they are cold and can't swim fast to warm up. This results in their core temperature being much, much higher than their extremities. An adaptation like this may have allowed Megalodon to survive. Now for creature secrecy. Some have wondered how can we claim to know Megalodon isn't alive in the vastness of the ocean when there are so many massive creatures that live in the sea that we know so little about. Whale sharks are the largest fish on the planet, but we don't even know where they spawn or even what they do for the first several years of their lives. Blue whales, the largest living being ever, are similarly unknown. If we can know so little about such massive creatures, how can we be sure that Megalodon also isn't somewhere out 
there. Well, it's important to note, we do know whale sharks and blue whales exist. We have seen them many times. Just because we're lacking information doesn't mean we know nothing. And if there were a 60 foot apex hyper predator ripping whales in half, we would know. Which means if Megalodon is still alive, it sure isn't hunting whales. Next, size adaptations. Given the primary challenge to Megalodon's survival was the sudden decrease in prey items and in suitable nursery areas, one potential solution for both of these challenges would be to drastically reduce in size. This is how great whites were able to survive this period. Despite being very large sharks today, great whites at the time were significantly smaller than Megalodon and did not fill the same hyper apex niche. If Megalodon were to survive this extinction period, it would almost definitely have had to reduce in size if it were to maintain its lifestyle of coastal and pelagic hunting and breeding in shallow nurseries. The other option would be to maintain its massive size and use that large size to help it better survive in the deep sea. We often see animals in the deep sea grow to significantly larger sizes than their shallower counterparts. This is called deep sea gigantism and is generally described as an adaptation to handle colder waters, decreased food supply, and increased oxygen. If Megalodon did survive its supposed extinction, it would have had to undergo some pretty drastic changes. Now for the metabolic rate. Megalodon's metabolism would have made a massive difference to its survival. A high metabolic rate allows sharks to exert more energy more quickly, but also obviously burns through those calories much faster. Mako sharks, for example, are some of the fastest swimmers in the world and have incredibly fast metabolisms, while sleeper sharks move very slowly except for moments of speed to ambush their prey. Given the a serious decrease in its primary prey source, if Megalodon were to survive, it would have had to have changed its metabolic rate, either seriously decreased it to survive in the deep, or decreased its size to maintain its metabolism. Now for the big deep sea sharks. Some have pointed out that there are already several big deep sea sharks. Six gill sharks, sleeper sharks, and Greenland sharks are all rather large deep sea sharks, which has helped to encourage the belief that Megalodon could also have survived in the deep sea. But these sharks are still nowhere near the size of Megalodon. The deep sea simply doesn't have enough food to sustain body sizes that large. Six gill sharks only reach at most 13 feet, while the largest sleeper sharks ever recorded have been estimated to be slightly over 20 feet, and Greenland sharks can reach some 24. But all of those, despite being quite large for modern sharks, are minuscule in comparison to the 40 to 60 foot size range estimated for Megalodon. However, that is not to say Megalodon couldn't have evolved to inhabit the deep sea, but it most certainly would not have maintained its massive size. Up next, reported sightings. One of the things that convinces people of Megalodon's existence are the frequent stories of sightings that are made. It's important to remind ourselves that the internet is not just here for our own entertainment and education. People make money off it, and often what makes the most money is not what is true, but what is sensational. We've already seen this happen with the fake Shark Week documentary, Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives. Full of bad CGI and intentional falsehoods, the mockumentary was still very convincing to numerous people, who still use images of the poorly rendered whale corpse as evidence of Megalodon. The thing is, the vast amount of misinformation, including willfully spread misinformation on the internet, obscures any real scientific attempts to determine if a Megalodon descendant is still alive. Use critical thinking skills when presented with evidence. Ask what the source is, what the person telling you has to gain from you believing, and what may be missing from the story. Also, ask yourself, is this person just making this entire story up? And finally, speciation. If you've gone through this video wondering, well, if Megalodon would have had to adapt in such a massive way to survive the changing climate, would it even be the same animal? Then that is a fantastic question, and a very important one. Because no, once a species adapts or evolves significantly, it is no longer, usually, considered the same species. There are many scientists who do believe Megalodon's genetic code has survived in descendant species, but those species would look nothing like Megalodon. If Megalodon did survive its supposed extinction, well, it wouldn't have. Not as the Meg we all know and love, at least. The environmental conditions were incredibly challenging, and in order for its descendants to survive, they would have had to adapt significantly and rapidly from the megalodon body form. Dropping sea levels and changing currents endangered nurseries and caused extinctions of medium and small baleen whales, which severely threatened food supply. Cooling waters also made life more energetically taxing and limited habitable ranges. In order to survive this multitude of environmental pressures, megalodon would have had to adapt rapidly and severely. We do see these sudden jumps in evolution 
occur in the natural world. And so it's not impossible that Megalodon did manage to adapt in time. But by the time it was adapted to whatever new environment it was in, be that surface waters or deep sea, it would have looked nothing like the massive shark we all know and love. Those were reasons the Megalodon shark may still exist. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and share, and be sure to follow for more.